And we're live. Mark Lewis, welcome awesome. to the podcast, my friend. Thanks for having me. And Fender here. <laughs> ah, what's what's the name? Fender. Fender, like Fender, Fender guitars. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Yes. That's a pretty yes. cool name, actually. Thank you, thank you. He actually made an appearance in the uh, Magento Association uh, webinar, or not webinar, the the conference that we did like a couple couple months ago. Oh, really? Uh, he made an appearance on the Open Ma or the Magento One End of Life uh, series. It was fun. <laughs> What was so? What 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 was the appearance exactly? I need to know. I need to know more about this. Oh, the the appearance was that I was talking about uh, Open Mage, and uh, he insisted on being in the video with me. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is, nice. is common in conference calls these days. How are you feeling about the Open Mage thing? Um, it's actually pretty cool now. I think there was like. Uh, there was a lot of uncertainty going up to the, like the end of life day, you know, that, that cutoff day, because I think a, particularly a lot of the payment gateways didn't want to come out and say like their plans, because I don't, I don't, I, th I think they didn't want to like kind of give people like a way out before the end of life. They wanted people but, to feel as much urgency as possible. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, in their mind and in Magento's mind, you know, a, a lot of companies mind, it would just be easier if everyone migrated. Yeah. Um, but in a merchant's mind, you know, I, I'm sure you've talked about before of, of estimating like a migration and I'm sure you know about this cost. Uh, a merchant looks at that and there's like, well, is there any other way, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, like, yeah, like as a merchant, like you, you have you're thinking about your existing business and you know how things have been operating and they've been working fine um, to whatever extent. And it's like, you don't want any changes. Um, and you know, so yeah, it's, I, I totally, there's for some reason there's part of me that completely gets that mindset. And I'm like the last time I did development, it was Magento one. So in some ways <laughs> I'm kind of stuck in like Magento cool. one mindset, you know? But yeah, yeah, I can see how from the um, from the payment providers, from the from the Magento platform side, it's a lot easier for them to be like, okay, guys, just get off of this old thing. We don't, you know, don't want to deal with the loose ends. There's probably some legal potential issue they could face. I'd imagine. I mean, uh, not being a lawyer, but yeah, there, there's. I mean, there's all that com PCI compliance stuff that like we've kind of gone back and forth on Twitter a lot of times yeah. with the compensating controls and, you know, some hosts like, like Nexus, um, are kind of doing almost their own, like, I, I can't remember what they call it, but just safe their harbor. own special safe Harbor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Their own special plan that they're, you know, looking for the vulnerabilities and they're kind of becoming that, uh, like that security, I guess, vendor of record of right. like, hey, if there's a security vulnerability in Magento 1, right. um, they're responsible for patching it or right. you know, putting firewalls right. in place, that kind of thing. When I saw the term safe harbor for the first time, I like it just made me feel like, oh, this is like a, an official thing. There's like an official like term for it. And it's like yeah. they got this. Like they got, I don't know exactly <laughs> what it means, the safe harbor thing, but right. it just immediately like made me feel like okay, it's all official. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's some peace of mind for sure. It's like all right, there's there's a landing page that yeah. now there's like a, a button to add it in your control panel. Like right. you know what does this mean? I mean yeah, yeah. I, I think at the end of the day, it's like now if you get some kind of some sort of complaint like pci compliance complaint you can basically like in nexus's case direct them to nexus and nexus will kind of you know take care of it i guess and and they've they've been doing that before like they're a, a lot of magento hosts are very helpful in pci compliance um but they're just i guess taking a bit more responsibility now yeah that's cool and you've been pretty happy with nexus it seems yeah, 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 for sure. Like, um, they transitioned to some new cloud plans, maybe a year or two ago, and um, that 
that was a pretty good fit for a lot of our clients because uh, they're not like super big. So they're not necessarily wanting to have like a dedicated server or like a cluster of servers. And so a good, basically fractional plan, like a cloud is, is good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, man. So I don't know if we want to get into too much, but I think you posted yesterday or today about the incident, the two year anniversary of the incident. Oh yeah. And I know you've been really open about talking about that, about the, the stroke that you had and stuff. And, um, I, it's, uh, I'm glad, you know, like, I can't believe it's been two years and it's cool that you're doing so well, you know, and everything like that. But, uh, yeah, I know you've been, yeah. post, you know, posting about that really transparently and stuff. So that's been cool. Cause you know, um, I think it's just cool to share like what, you know, you're going through, you know, in general. And mm. so for sure, um, for sure. It's it definitely like, uh, so I guess, you know, for people that like don't know, uh, two years ago, uh, from Sunday, I had a stroke really like totally unexpectedly. And for a couple months, um, basically I had to relearn how to, how to speak, um, in full sentences. I could like, uh, I had most of my vocabulary, vocabulary, um, but I kind of had trouble pronouncing things and I couldn't string together like full sentences like at all basically mm -hmm. um which like mm -hmm. verbally and also just like even typing like I could type total I could code totally fine which is kind of bizarre That's right I remember you telling me that. that's so strange yeah. how the different compartments of the brain are sort of like related but also sort of independent and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it was so weird it was actually like so I was in the ICU like the, the morning after the stroke and I could you know, barely speak and I'm like, what just happened? And then I get like an alert of like servers down and I did oh, have my God. laptop with me and then there's like Wi-Fi and I could barely like respond to the email to, to say like I'm fixing it, but I could SSH into the server and I was, I think it was out of disk space and you know, I cleared a bunch of files that, that's that so I, crazy I just, like <laughs> it made me feel better i was like all right i can't really speak or whatever but i'm an introvert anyway so that's not a big deal but at least i can still like code and yeah. get into some servers <laughs> do what matters <laughs> like, <laughs> like talking isn't that important at the end of the day like right. <laughs> compared to coding um yeah man that that was that was wild i remember when that happened and stuff and and then you uh, getting more comfortable speaking and everything and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's good that, that you're doing doing well, going strong and stuff. And then you also <laughs> posted, you said something to the effect of like, everybody should have, like, what, I, I don't remember how you worded it. Uh, like, everyone I, should have a little brain damage. <laughs> Yeah. Kind of like an ice, ice pick lobotomy. <laughs> right. Like shake things up a little bit. Like, exactly. Do you feel yeah. like your life changed in some ways? Like your perspective? Um, how did they? Yeah. Ever, yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, I I think uh, on a couple of levels, like one, a bit of an existential crisis on, hey, life can be really short, like you know, yeah. I could have just died at, at that point. Um, or, you know, had like terrible quality of life you know, people that have strokes a lot of times have, you know, way worse things and they don't fully recover ever. Right. Um, and so, you know, at that point I was, I kind of like, after I recovered, I was like, well, there's like, I, I don't literally like know what tomorrow will hold. So kind of like make the most of, uh, of the time, you know, I have and every day. Yeah. So that was good. And then, um, the, like the communication aspect was like really, really fascinating to me of, um, like relearning English because I don't, I don't know any other languages, but like English suddenly became my, my second language basically. That's um, so weird. I would get like, I would get in Ubers and in Miami there's, a lot of Spanish speakers, probably like 50%. And my English would be so bad, they would start trying to talk to me in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and I also don't know Spanish. And... <laughs> so, is it okay so, for me to laugh at that, or is that horrible? It's totally fine. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, God, I can't. I don't have any languages. Yeah. I have code. I have yeah, no languages. <laughs> God, I I try to learn so Spanish crazy. at that point too because I'm like I'm so bad at English like might as well but I I'm also yeah I'm still very terrible at at Spanish way worse than my English is now gotcha mostly gotcha uh, yeah ninety nine percent right well, if you ever want to practice Spanish uh, I've been trying to my wife has generally been pretty good about speaking Spanish particularly to our son he's young mm -hmm. enough he's two that um it, it kind of is a good age and just the last yeah. week or so i've started to be more disciplined about uh speaking spanish with him and stuff like that and so it's been that's uh, awesome yeah it's it's been cool and it, it's 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 cool because i'm a little out of practice so the spanish to a two-year-old is relatively simple <laughs> so <laughs> right. it's a good starting point and then there'll be little words that i need to remember how to say or whatever how do you say this oh yeah okay now i remember Want you yeah yeah <laughs> so it's like a good place for me to start to kind of speak more that's often that's so. a good age you know it's yeah like we can communicate in these basic sentences while you're still learning your primary language yeah. too yeah 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 <laughs> um i well, speaking of spanish is totally random i found this chrome extension the other day where it's called toucan toucan, toucan. yep yeah amazing oh uh, it's so cool. It, it, you know, like replaces random words with the other language. And I'm like, I have to disable it sometimes for work because it kind of gets in the way of things. But like, I want to remember to keep it on as much as possible. Such a cool, it's one of those things. So it, so it's an extension you install and then whatever website you're on, it randomly picks a small number of words and just in line changes them to that language. And then you can hover over them to whatever, to see what it means. And so it's one of those things you see it and you go, this is such a simple idea. How does it, how did this not exist? How did I not think about this? Like right. it's basically, you know, it's like Google translate, but it's just a small percentage of the words to translate. It's mm -hmm. brilliant. Like I saw that I sent it to my wife cause my wife is always thinking about language learning and stuff like that. And it's such a cool idea. I haven't tried it out yet, but um, yeah. yeah, it's a really cool it idea. No, it works well. I, I think it over time, it, it like chooses more words and, you know, it, it ex expands on like what gotcha. you know. Oh, OK. Uh, OK. That that actually sounds a lot more complicated than just randomly replacing a random number of words. Like, yeah, yeah. Like if it tries I, yeah. to keep track of like which words have you done before? Let's not do that word. Let's do a different like I could see that getting pretty complicated. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it, it, it's more complicated like that, but I, you know, just haven't tried it for yeah. very long. But I think cool. I actually tweeted the, maybe the founder or somebody this morning, cause there's this concept where you can like own a word. That was toucan too. Yeah. And I don't, I don't get that. Like I saw that yesterday, yeah. somebody like owned the word love and I was like, that's cool. How does that work? And I clicked on it, and I was like, "I don't get it. How, what is that? What does that mean?" I didn't understand it yet either. Okay, got <laughs> to figure that out. Like, like maybe they're gonna sell advertising on certain words or something. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if that was a monetization model where you could somehow, like, as a user, like, pay for a word, I don't know. Mm. It's, it'll be yeah. Got to figure that it'll out. Be like, if you don't buy the premium plan, some sometimes you're words you know uh agua would be like would you want sparkling spring agua <laughs> right <from> aquafina now <laughs> right 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 that that actually be kind of a neat advertising model you know there's so yeah. many advertising models that are kind of just annoying well they're all sort of annoying but <laughs> um yeah youtube we're thinking about paying for youtube because like our daughter is starting to use it more. And like, I just, the idea of my kids seeing ads like drives me crazy. Like somebody's basically paying to control my kids' brains. <laughs> like right. it's one thing if they're doing it to me and I can like fight it off and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I, you know, so yeah. Do you, you have to filter that out? <laughs> yeah, you do. You want to, yeah. you want to filter it out. Uh, I, I especially like for kids, I, I remember like Saturday morning cartoons and you would get like inundated with commercials. And I'm I'm sure I asked my parents, totally. like, I, I want Fruity Pebbles now, you know, <laughs> like if you can control your kids not begging like for Fruity Pebbles, like 
definitely that's worth like ten dollars a month yeah 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 it was, it was weird. I was talking with my my. We were having dinner, and it, me and my wife were talking about uh, pans, like frying pans. And she's like, "I think I need a new pan." And then my mm -hmm. my ten year old Olivia is like, "Oh, I saw a YouTube ad for some special frying pan that oh has gosh. like some special features to it." And we were just like, "We gotta pay for this. I don't. We don't want her to see these ads." <laughs> um, kids are now proxies for the advertising companies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um. So, um, Shopify stuff, uh, you've been digging into kind of the Shopify world quite mm -hmm. a bit the last year or so, um, something like that. I think honestly, I was, it was about two years ago okay. when, when like the Magento one to Magento two transition was heating up a bit more, uh, like, uh, and they were sending out more urgent messages of like, get off Magento one that, that was a point where. Um, some of our clients, like I, I didn't feel like Magento two was like the best fit for them from Magento one. They had kind of like grown up on Magento one. Mm -hmm. Um, but they ne weren't necessarily like to the, the point where I, I felt like Magento two was like, uh, Magento two is like kind of a, a beast in it in a good way. But in a bad way too, you know. It, 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 <laughs> you were like trying to be nice like, about it. You're like right. in a good way, but also in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. Both there's both sides. There's fifty percent pros and fifty percent cons. <laughs> Definitely equal. <laughs> yeah. So I was trying I to be it. diplomatic. But yeah. I saw through it. <laughs> <laughs> the effort um, was appreciated though you know <laughs> uh, so um, um yeah so yeah, digging no, into shopify more two years yeah and and at that point it was like all right i don't love it as a developer because i'm very much a developer at heart i i want to have full control over everything um and magento ultimately you know we you, we can tell clients of like um, we can do whatever on Magento because we have full access to the code. It's just like it's budget and, and time. Um, so I, I felt like for a while, like that's, that's the best. Um, but then at some point it seemed like Shopify, as far as features and customizations, it was to the level where it was like good enough for a lot of use cases and you maybe maybe had to do some weird compromises or weird work workarounds but um if you could make it work for a merchant and um you know their business kind of like supported it it was like all right this is an interesting you know platform and uh it's it's good for their business it, it probably saves them money honestly mm -hmm. yeah it's been interesting to see some of the tooling you've been building related to, like you're saying, some of the things where um, you don't have as much direct control. Like, for example, the thing where uh, somebody can go in and edit their theme as a shop of, like the client can go in and you right. don't have a workflow where you can enforce uh, a, a version control deployment workflow necessarily. Somebody can go in and mess up settings or whatever. Um, and then you built that thing that kind of monitors, if I understand it, like monitors certain changes in the live thing and keeps them in sync or notifies you if things change. I thought that was pretty, pretty smooth. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, that kind of tooling like has helped me kind of transition from like, like, as you were saying, you can literally like edit your theme in Shopify just through the admin. So, you know, anyone that's an admin can, can can you know you can break your site right. editing your theme very right. easily right um you know even like a, a bad css change like might not like compile and basically it just it's, it goes crazy Wide and th screen that's, of death or whatever for sure yeah th that's definitely happened yeah um and so we had already started using git for like our changes and we would kind of um we would create new branches off of um, the the main kind of theme and then just like clone the main theme and, you know, a theme would be a branch. Right. Um, but the problem was that sometimes when we would do those edits on this other branch, uh, the the client or there's some like automated apps and stuff like will go in and like edit 
the the live theme and we didn't get those changes we didn't know about those changes and so when then we when we would like you would overwrite push, them or step on them or whatever exactly exactly so i created this this script where basically it's it's just a, a cron job that runs hourly and it uh, uses the very basic like Shopify theme kit tool to download the latest theme um, code and then you know get it to just uh, a Git repository and, um, and that's that's worked pretty well um, to 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 monitor the changes and to avoid like overriding yeah that, that kind of stuff. That's cool. That's another one of those things. I was like, wonder why that didn't exist already. Um, and and maybe people have their own you know set of tools they use or whatever. Um, yeah. I'm still not. I don't know that much about the Shopify ecosystem in general, but I'm trying to kind of better understand it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I thought that it was... is. It's interesting. I think the Shopify ecosystem it's a little more um, like internal. I think a lot of those tools are kind of being built in agencies and in development shops. But there's a, a bit less of like a open sharing um, atmosphere. I'd imagine probably because it's more like SaaS heavy in the sense that like every plugin is essentially SaaS, whereas which I actually think is smart as a business model. I think so many open source extensions yeah. aren't able to monetize them as much as they need to in order to survive as an extension business. Um, right. So I think that's cool. But there's probably less of that. Like in Magento, it's like by default, everything's open source. Um, yeah. and, and so there's probably something about that, that trickles down into how people share their tools and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. And then I saw you were tweeting today about something that was kind of wild. It was like, uh, there, you're trying to hit their GraphQL API endpoint and it yeah. doesn't let you do it from a regular Sh Shopify front end theme. It's designed to be like an endpoint for a PWA on a different domain or something like that. Yeah. So like the Shopify front end API, which is kind of their newest API to, you know, get products, orders, or not so much orders, uh, like products, um, pages. Um, it's, it seems to like, there's some core settings and this is getting kind of technical. Um, but it's, it's blocked where like you can't do those like post post calls that you have to do for GraphQL basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not hundred percent sure if that's intentional or they, they, I don't, I don't think they it necessarily intended for the front end API to be like part of the, the theme. Like mm -hmm. they intended it, to be like consumed by almost like a, a Jek Jekyll site that you would you know build on the side, and then it would just like consume this API. Right. Um, right. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was a little weird, but it's actually a very useful API to get you know like product data. And um, normally, like in Shopify. Uh, you have the the liquid theme that's liquid is kind of their templating engine and the problem we were bumping up against is um liquid in general is pretty fast but if you do a lot of like for loops around data particularly in our case it was like a lot of products on a product page or product products on a collection page and then variants kind of like you know swatches of you know size colors Mm -hmm. um and you loop through those you know so maybe you've got it was a big collection page it was 100 products and each uh product has 30 variants that's a lot i guess 300 or 3000 i i can't do math never I'm, do math in public I'm, I'm, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> only on a calculator <laughs> but you got a, a loop inside of a loop for yeah pretty big yeah. numbers yeah so then it's like multi-second page load type deal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the the weird thing is too, like a lot of Shopify developers don't like realize this because Shopify does have like a full page caching engine, where um, that that even if you, even if your like original Liquid page maybe t took like twenty seconds to load, which I've seen that and that that's what this page was doing originally. Um, once it's in that cache, it's They'll like cache oh, it's, it real nicely for you. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But the other problem with that is like Shopify's full page caching engine is stupid and um, it uh, it can get cleared from anything. So, you know, any product uh, is edited, you know, even their inventory is edited by one. It's going to clear every page out of the cache. Um, and so regardless it, of whether that product is included on that cash page or not okay exactly there, there's no like tagging of like oh this was product was edited so only like clear this cash you right, know cash right. page it's right. just like it, it constantly gets wiped out if gotcha. you have a, a store that does any like significant business right 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 um, yeah that makes yeah. sense um, so yeah we you so we like i i use this api this front end api to try to get those variants instead of you know having that like really low slow loading uh, time and i couldn't do it directly because of that limitation but was able to build like a a worker in cloudflare where, where cloudflare workers are kind of like the serverless like little node js like right. server that you can do right and this worker is able to reach that Shopify API and then Shopify, our theme in Shopify was able to get that data from that worker. So mm -hmm. it, was, mm -hmm. it, it required an extra hop, but it was actually like working pretty well. That's so pretty cool. I'm kind of excited and to then, see where that goes. And so then you just basically like for the cores policy, you can just whitelist your worker uh domain the do the whatever cloud flare or uh cloud front domain of the worker um it, kind of the other way around in the, the worker i put the cores domain of saying like whatever www.com that okay. that's that's approved to get information from from okay. this okay yeah okay but then how did the how did the cloud front worker grab the data from Shopify API if that cores policy was blocking um, domains. because uh, the Cloudflare worker almost like works as more of like a, a backend like node.js server and not like um like a like a front end JavaScript oh I get it okay I think I get it it's like if you basically use PHP to to consume this right. API you know, got from it. Shopify's perspective, it, it looks no different. Right. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I hate it when I hit a, it's funny. I, I hate it when I hit a cores policy thing. I usually do that with like my own stuff. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, I got to go in and put the headers in and, <laughs> and <Yeah>. stuff. <laughs> it's easier when you have control of both sides. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, that's one of the things like if you have full control, Magento, you know, you could yeah. just set it simply yeah, but yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you have to do these workarounds yeah um so then on the on the other thing on the on the shopify front you had posted about the disarming the rebels uh post mm -hmm. um which i i read the first 30 percent or so pretty closely and then i kind of skimmed <laughs> that was a long post but i probably his, skimmed it a bit too <laughs> <laughs> but his thing i guess was toby was said hey we're arming the rebels in the sense that you know amazon is the 500 pound gorilla and then on the other side there's all these independent merchants that they're essentially you know helping to uh build you know great e-commerce experiences and then this mm -hmm. guy was saying well they're not just arming the rebels they're sort of arming everybody and they're sort of creating this arms race so that everybody kind of has the same tools and so uh everybody is sort of then on the, like a level playing field um but kind of in a bad way because i don't know i i did it didn't totally add up to me why that's a bad thing right. for everybody to have good tools um yeah i guess it's like bad for whom you know probably so maybe bad for for some merchant it's it's probably good for consumers overall you know like it, it does like drive down prices and it creates competition um i think there was a little bit in there or maybe i just made this up in our discussion but um uh about like vc funding where um you know you know you say like arm the rebels or whatever i think maybe some people might look at these like big VC funded DTC com companies like Casper or, you know, like uh, Lisa or something, you know, 
it's only mattresses. There's so many mattresses. So many mattress now. companies. It's <laughs> in, absurd. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like, that's kind of almost like the point, too, is like, all right, there's so much money and it's so accessible that you could anyone can start their own mattress company now. Um, but these big funded companies, they're able to spend a lot of money on like Google ads, Facebook ads. And that's competitive, too. And it like drives up um, pri- prices for or like the cost of like customer acquisition and um it's it's kind of not totally sure whether like some of those business models like will play out long term you know like there's criticism of casper where they lose three hundred dollars or something on every sale right um and I, i think they went public or they're going public soon so that you know that's kind of um public that information is public um and so i guess like if they're just like spending a lot of money like driving up prices that is bad for i don't know a a start or just someone a regular person that wants to do mattresses or any kind of similar product um it's not really accessible anymore it kind of raises the barrier to entry that you can't just like the 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 kind of the idea behind arming the rebels is like the little guy like the little guy can start you know right. an e-commerce business but then there's all this vc money in they're all probably outbidding each other on advertising and things like that and then it's kind of like there's probably this huge barrier to entry now where it's not so much the little guys that can is especially if you're talking mattresses specifically i'm sure it's different in each category yeah. Like mattresses just seem complicated to begin with. Like you got to get like purple scientists and you got to like <laughs> design that perfect mattress and stuff. Right. And you uh, have to compress it in a box this size. Yeah. I don't, that's, that's I don't magic even, how they do that. How do you know how they do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess I get that from that perspective. And then all this money is just kind of fueling. And my, like my thought was it's sort of accelerating things. It's sort of accelerating the pace of progress. Um, although, yeah, there are these weird scenarios where like company isn't even profitable and they're just slanging mattresses left and right, even though they're, right. they're sort of fundamentally not profitable. But then it's like for the end consumer, is it ultimately like if the end consumer is getting a quality product at a good price and then all there's all this competition, it seems like it's sort of advancing the state of the art of mattresses on some mm-hmm. level. Um, but yeah, my, the other I mean, thing to me is like all these DTC products are so expensive. Like, right. You know what I mean? Like you can get a pretty decent mattress at Ikea for like 150 bucks and the <laughs> cheapest you're going to get it online is like 500. I thought going direct was supposed to save money, you know? <laughs> and I mean, right. It's cool that it's like the best product and they make the product the absolute best but Mm -hmm. it's like how about like a medium level product that's like cheaper than what you can get in stores that's what i'm that's what i'm that's the dtc movement that i'm waiting for (laughs) right like maybe if like the google ad spend didn't like cost so much that they could they could do that online yeah like ikea is not spending any money on facebook ads maybe maybe that's their secret you know yeah (laughs) yeah which is funny because the whole i mean the whole it's, it's baked into the word itself, direct to consumer, is that, mm-hmm. you know, usually going direct means that you're saving the costs of the middleman. That's like the right. whole point, right? Like buy a factory direct whatever, you're saving money because you're going direct to the factory. But yeah, like you're saying, like, it's almost like the middleman is are the advertising platforms. Yeah. And then the costs on those advertising platforms are going up and up and up and up. So it's like you still have a middleman and maybe the middleman is even more expensive than the old middleman. <laughs> like I want the right. old middleman back. <laughs> you know? Facebook is now the middleman. You yeah. Know? And everyone loves Facebook these days. <laughs> Everybody loves Facebook. That's, that's, an, that's an uncontroversial statement. Everybody loves Facebook. Across the board. So Imagine yeah. like a world like where literally everybody loved Facebook. There was no like everybody mm. was happy. There was no problems. Like all the <laughs> that, big tech companies were just beloved. I don't remember that world since like college where, you know, yeah. when 
I, I was in college like when they were rolling it out to individual colleges and it was like the the, the biggest thing in the world of like oh my gosh like my college has you know facebook now and like facebook could do no wrong for right, a couple years right and then right now look now look where we are yeah. like, <laughs> got bad took a yeah took a left turn somewhere um <laughs> yeah yeah but that was interesting um what about uh like remote work in general how's that your company's been remote for a while yeah. 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 That's it's, it's funny, you know, with with COVID, basically everyone is remote. Um, and but like I started the company as remote because basically like I started a company just because I well, I started freelancing just because I didn't want to go into the office. Um, I, I tried one time I had a job <laughs> back in the day I had a job and uh, I just t- tried not to go into the office like for two weeks and uh the CEO like emailed me and it's like, Hey, I haven't seen you around. <laughs> and I was like, well, Oh really? You just, <laughs> you just literally stopped going into the office. Well, like I, my, my job, like weirdly changed just like suddenly web development. And suddenly I didn't have to like interact with anyone else in the office. Okay. And like, it was, it was online and I was just like, well, i you know, like if they're going to make me do this job, like the, uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. You know? And that was yeah. back in the day before remote work was even like very common. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was like 10 years ago where, I mean, the, I think the four hour work week had come out, you know, the okay. four hour work week is kind of like the, the birthplace of, uh, the manifesto of on remote work. Exactly. And I, th- I think one one of the tricks in the book is just not to come to work for two weeks, you know. Oh, OK. Uh, Was that or, why you did it? Did you read the book? And then I think so. I, I think I read the book <laughs> around that time. And I was just like, that's I, actually, I think it was like convince your boss to let you work from home. But I was, you know, it was like ask for forgiveness instead of permission, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. And at that point, and it's different. It's different in different company cultures, you know. Uh, that particular company like really likes to have like people in the office and it's kind of like a, a you family. You found out like, the hard way. You found that out the hard know. way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. They didn't fire me. Like that's that's a nice thing about like being like an essential part of a business. You you can kind of like get away with some things and be like, oh, okay, sorry, I didn't know. Or, yeah. you know, as long as you do your job well. Like yeah. that, that's the important part to, to do your job well. Yeah. Um, you know, they keep you there despite like your personality. Yeah. <laughs> You're a trailblazer for us all. Just, just, uh, just not yeah. coming into work, <laughs> starting, right. to, starting to set those expectations in the workplace. That's exactly. And, but at that point I was like, I, I need to work remotely. And so like the next job I found was, it was actually at, at NASA and, and it was, a, I worked like, totally at NASA. Remote. I worked at J. Yeah, I had a, uh, well, it was just an internship at JPL. Yeah. Um, It was like a three month internship. I was working on some random side project that had no, it was in the, it was in the high, um, it was in the, what's it called? High resolution imaging department or whatever. They would pull down these images. I didn't even work directly with the images. I just worked on this like Java application that was supposed to help them like import legacy files from one place to another it was like I, yeah but it was it makes know. sense it was written in java not yeah. javascript i'm sure no java. no straight up java yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh but what, no so what did java. you do at nasa um so i uh i i didn't really have this kind of experience to get this job but the the hiring was they, they didn't know uh, but uh, my job was to maintain like the security of all their Macs. So like, you know, they have like six, 6,000 or so like Mac computers across the you know different centers. Dude, that's a and big freaking job. I know. Like I didn't know how to do it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I learned quickly. <laughs> I hope you learned quickly, man. <laughs> yeah. It's NASA. It's it's exciting when you get in a team where, you know, everyone also is learning around you and, um, 
you're kind of figuring it out as you go along and everyone else is figuring out their jobs as they go along and they don't know that you're also figuring out the job, yeah. you know? Yeah. Everybody's just figuring it out. Yeah. It was kind of like a startup. Um, nice. cause it was, it was a weird transition. Um, I don't know. I guess that was like eight years ago. Uh, Hewlett Packard enterprise services, um, which is Hewlett Packard, but it was basically more of an IT consulting company was kind of taking over the management of like the desktops, laptops uh, at NASA. They had won this big contract. Oh, okay, and gotcha. so we, I was like hired like really at the beginning of that contract and we had to like set up everything and kind of like take over. So kind of like was like a startup um, within NASA. Nice. Um, so we, we would learn together. Nice. And what was, so was that remote? What, what was the, that was remote? Mm -hmm. so, oh, okay. Yeah. It's funny. Like they hired me and like, I didn't even like meet any of my coworkers until I had been like working there for like three or four months. Um, I think honestly, I think they were all pretty shocked at like how young I was, like when they finally met me. But at that point I was like, he was like, well, he has the job. Like he's been doing pretty well for the past few months so i guess because he can do it so Dude, that's that was like insane yeah, yeah remote I, work i remember i had like a like you know like a badge you know like a security badge to get in mm -hmm. and i can't imagine that they d would have done anything remotely you know mm. that was such a long time ago but uh yeah, yeah that's pretty I, cool. I, I, it's definitely, I'm sure, like, security and stuff has, has changed over the years. You know, you have to have VPNs, and um, it's definitely, like, a arduous process to uh, get, like, security access. And, yeah. you know, to go through background checks. And um, I don't I don't think I got, like, actually, like, access to, like, network and, or that kind of stuff for, like, months into the job uh, because there was like such an a, a approval process, you know, right, I was right. hired, but I didn't, I couldn't actually like do much for the few, first few months. I right, just right. remember like chilling on the couch and be like, this is the best job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> they had you I working think. in some like fake sub network just to make sure you weren't a hacker. Basically. Just, like letting you run around in a sandbox. <laughs> just um, to trap me. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, so, so basically you've been doing remote forever essentially um and so it's, like a, it's probably been i mean real simple i mean a lot of people are struggling with remote work now but yeah for those of us that have been doing it forever it's kind of just like business as usual mm -hmm. yeah it's basically like uh well the weird thing is the the day-to-day -day is is very normal it's it's like the nights and weekends that are that are now very boring kind of you suck. know yeah 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 because it's like before i used to be like all right i can like be super productive during the day and then you know like can go out or you know hang out with friends and nights and weekends and now it's kind of just like the days and nights kind of blend together and uh yeah it's just like okay like i can work i, I feel like it for a while like product productivity was like a bit down for me, because I was like, well, I can just like stretch it over more time because like there's not so much urgency of like getting my work done to do whatever, like mm -hmm. like traveling, you know, like I used to do a lot of a lot of traveling um, and uh, traveling is, is a bit more complicated these days. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say yeah. the least. Uh, like. I, I'm def I'm definitely like tempted to see like how I can travel because you know if you're like protecting yourself wearing a mask it it feels like pretty safe um, but like it's very restrictive for for the U.S. like you can't travel many places out of the U.S. right now like I think it's like Mexico and there's a few places where you have to get like a test like 72 hours before and it's just like yeah. it's a lot more. You know, it's it's not just hop on a plane and you know work from a random place. It's like you have to really like plan that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's tough. I took a quick trip to Colorado about a mm. month ago, which was which was cool. Um, I was thinking about Colorado actually. Yeah, real nice. Um, Steamboat Springs and uh, and uh, what's it called Boulder. 
Throwed our night. Which was cool. So yeah, it was you nice. It was nice to get out. Yeah, it was mm. it was nice to get out and just, you know, my wife had her sister in town, so I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, Do you fly or drive? I flew. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, Feel pretty safe. And pretty yeah, cool. yeah. I mean everybody has their masks on and you know. Mm-hmm. Um trying to remember if I was sitting next to anybody or not. Um I don't think I was. Can't even remember. Yeah. But yeah. Pretty nice. It's pretty I chill. mean that that would be the only thing I would be worried about is like if someone like is sneezing next to you or something, you'd be like, Oh, oh no. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. But no, the worst thing is if you cough like you know how sometimes you just cough, like you're not sick, it's just like <laughs> <right>. <laughs> like you feel so paranoid, like you look around, you're like, Oh god, oh no. Like <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna come tackle me and like sh- like sure. stab me with a needle and like <laughs> sedate yeah. me and like carry me away or something like that you know it's like it's just a, oh, it was just a nervous cough i'm fine i swear <laughs> yeah. i'm fine <laughs> under your direction you get, get this <laughs> you get the eye you get the stairs <laughs> yeah i think so. I, one of my masks like early on it kind of like pinched my nose and i i like it i swear like it made me sneeze like every time i put it on and it was like it was the worst yeah the and masks like, are oh. such a hassle I'm kind of yeah. getting used to them, but it's you yeah. Have to like experiment with like more different types of masks or something. Do they? Did you did you do that? Yeah, I've only tried one, just the basic, like disposable I got, ones. Okay, yeah, yeah. I got one from like Adams, the the shoe company, um, and it's like pretty soft and. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's like the most protective thing because it's you know it's not like super tight around your face, but it it does like what it needs and it, it's comfortable, you know. Nice. Uh, I'm sure there's different levels of like protection and like comfort that people are more comfortable with, and yeah. But I like it. Yeah, so. yeah. So you were talking about nights and weekends. You mentioned you've been doing the COVID dating. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's that's what you do on nights and weekends and quarantine. <laughs> six foot six foot distance dating. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. Well, I mean, first first you start on the apps, you know, the online dating. You know, like the, there's so many like dating apps now, and but like I heard that like the numbers on the apps are way up because like people are kind of like stuck. They're like, all right, like. You know, like, let's, let's see what's out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, like, I think I think there's a, a higher, like, barrier to, like, actually meeting with someone now. Like, especially in Miami, um, the, the cases were pretty bad. You know, they're, they're getting better these days. But, like, a month ago, the, you know, it was up to, like, 10,000 cases a day in Florida. And so, like, like, people, like, were, like, talking to each other. But, like the the effort of like actually meeting up uh like to go out on a date like was kind of this hurt like like big effort of like all right like oh i might get infected or you know like it feels so like taboo to like almost like meet with a stranger now yeah Um, and so it's definitely it was interesting like going like asking people out on a date and then uh, like I, I, I mentioned on on Twitter, like some of the dates, like people, uh, women, like we're, we're still like very like concerned about like, you know, getting sick. You know, it's like theoretically you should assume that anyone could be infected at any time. So it's just like, all right, like we need to keep our mask on like when we're close to each other and we can only take our mask off if we're, if we're social distancing. So yeah. It's like yeah. social distancing dating. Yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah I, I i went on like two dates with with this girl and like she insisted on like staying like six feet apart like the entire time <laughs> like, good, you can have good conversations uh but it is this is a little weird like it it almost reminded me of like being in youth group and you're like uh <laughs> like it was like leave room for for Jesus. It was Gotta like leave you know, room no, for the Holy Spirit, brother. Like, exactly. Yeah. No touching. You know. One one time we did touch hands and then we immediately sanitized our hands. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, 
that sounds like a hat. Like, why not just get tested beforehand? Like, if you're going to go on a date, why not just be like, hey, we're both going to get tested, whatever period beforehand, and then, like, have an yeah. actual regular date, you know? But, I mean, that kind of makes sense. Oh, it does and it doesn't. Like, I feel like people don't get, like, tested unless they, like, really, like, know or they suspect that they're infected because mm-hmm. – you it's Probably a pain to wait in the line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't get your results sometimes. Like in Florida, sometimes it's like delayed for like five or seven days. Mm. So it's like, and you could get theoretically, you could get infected get in those five that to eight. Window. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I, eventually, like, I think people have chilled out a little bit, and it's just like, all right, like this is a risk, and it's it's a weird situation. And, in Miami, I, I think a lot of sit- cities where like you have to wear a mask generally like when well, you definitely have to wear a mask like inside a place and then there's only outdoor seat- seating and you have to wear a mask until you sit down. Right. And so that's like it's been funny like this this ceremony of like going on a first date and you know we're wearing a mask and then we get to the table and like it's unveiling the you know our face. You know, right. Like, right. All right. Like. It's like someone could like really catfish you like really right. well. It's like, wait, wait I didn't <laughs> yeah, recognize. They have a beard or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. like it's like it's like the thing with like in the in like uh, what you call it like in uh in like uh, what's the movie with in like um not Prince of Egypt with the Disney Aladdin. It's like Aladdin. it's like yeah, back in the like day where like they until they get married they wear the face veil and then you get married and then they take the face veil off. And you find exactly. out find out what you got. I think there's a, like an Old Testament story too. Yes. Uh, Rachel, that, that's, not Rachel, the dude. Rachel. Okay, yeah. he works for seven years and then marries the daughter and then he gets faked out. And it's yeah. the wrong daughter. Daughter. And, then and he's, he's supposed he, to work for seven more years. And he's like, yeah, that sounds reasonable. I'll do that. Right. <laughs> it's a very, very different uh, levels of patience back then <laughs> I like swipe for seven minutes and then you know i go on the date with the wrong person <laughs> exactly it's like i want a refund <laughs> yeah. um it's, it's just it's a no a whole like other social norm that you kind of have to figure out of like what are you comfortable with and i don't know I, yeah i think i think i've gotten to the point where it's like all right like we're like out on a date or whatever we're we should be comfortable with each other but then you know when you're walking around and stuff like you kind of have to put a mask on um and they're just random people that you don't know or you're not going to talk to you know they're just random people yeah yeah for sure yeah it's it's weird i i feel like uh like not seeing people's like facial expressions like fully yes does this change the dynamic yes Uh. it's so weird it like it's so weird it 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 almost it's like it almost is sort of dampening like the level of emotion that you feel Mm -hmm. just in general about people that you see it's almost like yeah it feels like a little more robotic like we're all a little more robotic it's almost like a phone call because even though you can see your fa- their face, like you don't have all all the like nonverbal like expressions that you're mm-hmm. used to getting yeah. like feedback. Yeah, like yeah. it's a bummer how you can't just like smile, like you know, so, like I'll sometimes just smile at somebody if I'm walking by them or whatever. And right. like now, like if you <laughs> if you smile real big, you can kind of see in the eyes. The eyes. Exactly. But if you not, you yeah. just look like you're death staring some somebody. <laughs> it's exactly. like super creepy. So so then I just don't don't make eye contact at all, right? So right, it's just right. like Yeah, it's so weird. I, I feel like there should be more transparent masks. Somebody was saying that they have those and stuff like that for some people. I've but, seen pictures of them and they're really creepy. Like I had they? that same thought too, uh, but it when you actually see pictures of it, like you should Google it sometimes. It's just horrible. It, 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 yeah, it looks like something like out of the dentist's office or something. It's just like, <laughs> it's so unnatural to be like, well, because usually it's like kind of solid around here and uh, then it's like clear here. And it's just like, uh, a mouth, okay. like abstracted. It, you from just the head. look like a serial killer. 
Like it, it just yeah, like exactly it just, like, it just doesn't work. work. Yes, I was I I thought I totally thought of that. And yeah. as, as soon as you see a picture, you're like, what? Yeah. No. No. Maybe the just... face shields are the answer because then it's just a a simple thing. Yeah. A plastic probably is more protective, and then you can kind of see through it. I mean, I, I've seen else. people like wearing face shields for for sure. Yeah. Uh, it does it does like look better yeah, you know yeah yeah <laughs> try that on your next date <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i'm gonna wear this the entire date i mean <laughs> could see still maybe I'll, yeah. I'll bring one for my date too yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'll be the guy in the black shirt and the face shield <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> nice um cool man well anything else we want to get to that we didn't get to yet um what was that? Um, uh, one. LinkedIn fails. Oh, LinkedIn fails. Yeah, we're starting I, a whole thread on our LinkedIn fails. Not yes. our LinkedIn fails, the LinkedIn fails that we see in the wild. So many LinkedIn right. fails. Um, it's just it's, it's funny. Yeah, there's just so much material there. I, I I really like I started like feeling like they're like pickup lines, like terrible pickup lines like yeah. you know yeah like i i just saw you your profile and you looked like you're in e-commerce and we should hang out you know yeah. i mean we should connect you know yeah <laughs> yeah everything is merging right like linkedin is becoming tiktok linkedin is becoming tinder like everything is just it's all it's all blending together yes yeah. yes definitely i mean all the social media or that is funny one thing i i just it just reminded me of too it's like i've realized these days like when you go out on dates people look you up people stalk all of your social media accounts oh yeah that makes sense i would definitely yeah. do like i've never dated in this time period of so many digital footprints and things like that i yeah. would check out everybody i would check out all your stuff i'd want to know mm -hmm everything what kind of linkedin comments is this person posting right. what kind of tweets you know does this person have a job uh, um, yeah <laughs> yeah it's important to have Miami. they been there at least two years you know like oh, you want to see that right. you know mm -hmm. like you see two, a little stable yeah you see three like six month jobs in a row that's a red flag definitely. yeah that's definitely a, definitely that's a and real flag if you see they're like a business owner like me, that's like a very like kind of sketchy. It was like, do they have a job? Could go either way. They have a business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they a business CEO? Exactly. You know? Yeah. And you go to their website and you're like, well, all their employees are cats. So I'm not <laughs> sure if like this is a legitimate company. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you were saying that uh, you're saying that everybody looks up your social media stuff and yeah yeah that's just the way it is that like you know we, we live online yeah you know? does All... it make you think about like let's say you're getting ready to go to like you connect with somebody and then you're like you enter the phase where you're like they're going to check out all my stuff does it make <laughs> you think differently about like how you're posting oh like how is this potential date gonna see this or that or whatever <laughs> like <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. I, de I definitely like i'm like all right don't like post thing don't post too much about previous dates right of like right which yeah i have done so far so you know <laughs> yeah. still single so you know i don't know how how that's gone so i don't know it's Definitely. It, it definitely like makes you think of like, all right, everything I do is kind of public. Yeah. And and like I guess most people should think that anyway. Yeah. Um but sometimes you assume that like your your like public information is a little siloed. Yeah. I guess it's, people Facebook is sometimes more private than their Instagram, LinkedIn or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. How do you feel about that? Yeah, like when I'm tweeting, I just feel like it's my own little bubble of people that I, I know on Twitter like you and like, you know, people that I've met at conferences. And then there's very, very much so certain people who I know from other contexts 
who I mm-hmm. don't at all imagine involved in that world. And then sometimes yeah. somebody will randomly go onto Twitter from like another part of my life and I'll be like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This there was is, supposed to be a, this shield, this separation. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. supposed to be a separation. But it's like, no, this is all fully public, a hundred percent public. So it's right. a, it's a strange um yeah it's kind of a strange thing i did make my account private at one point for a little while Mm -hmm. and it was cool but then like you know things like you could just get less distribution like people can't retweet like you know because you kind of want um you want to connect with the people you know but you also want your ideas to spread a little bit to meet new other people so you know it limits that if you make your stuff private you know yeah, definitely. I I feel like Twitter is a different beast and if you're if you're private. You know, it's more like a inclusive club of like, oh, this is my 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 people, like my ideas are only going to these people. But I I do think I like the value of Twitter of like give, getting into the the public conversation and especially I mean, I know people have different feelings about this, but now like if you see in your feed of like someone's favorited of like one of your friends or your followers or whatever favorites something else. Sometimes you see that in your feed. Mm-hmm. And I think it like contributes to some cross pollination, which is, I think it's good. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, you get, you get exposure to, to more ideas than you, know, you would originally just like get from your followers. Yeah. Yeah. I actually like those recommendations. Um, I feel like those ones show up more on the desktop for me. And then Mm -hmm. on my phone, it seems like it's just strictly, um, retweets or my follower, people I follow, but then on the desktop, it shows random recommendations and stuff like that. Um, which is cool. It it is weird. It's definitely a different feed on desktop and mobile. I've, I've noticed Facebook too. Like I, I see totally different content depending on desktop or mobile yeah yeah it's like, weird I don't, yeah i don't understand it and yeah. then and then facebook like suggest me to be friends like with everyone i know on the other platforms like yeah i don't know like how do you know how do you guys you. know all this stuff <laughs> like, yeah. yeah like i mean i'm like should i add ben marks like facebook really like wants me to be really friends with wants ben me to yeah <laughs> yeah I'm, not, I'm, I'm like i feel bad like if i'm not like sometimes like adding like people from other places in my life maybe i'm being suggested in their friends be like well you know like i don't know you know are we friends I, we're kind of work friends are we you know? work like, are we're not facebook friends we're just we're and then there's some people that cross all the boundaries there's no face like they just all the work people on facebook there's no separation of church and state at all you <laughs> right. know <laughs> it's like separation of work and personal yeah yeah, yeah. and then i guess the, then you have to police your facebook differently of like, yeah all right yeah especially if you're a business owner like us you know you're you're like well i'm, I'm not really safe in my politics or something like that like yeah yeah uh, people yeah. are more i think open about politics on facebook generally yeah um, yeah yeah probably i remember when <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> You're I, like, I don't yeah. like, I haven't talked yeah. about anything Just, political in like as long as I can remember on Facebook I've tried I've yeah like for for like at least a year I think I've tried to like cut out political discourse online like yeah it just it's it just tough. you get sucked into it and you're like what where does this go like it it didn't like produce anything meaningful but dude I you remember see the discussion. I remember when I saw your Instagram account, you have like a huge, you have a lot of followers on Instagram, don't you? Uh, decently. Like I think probably like some, some are bots. Like at some point, like a thousand or 2000, like just came out of nowhere. Okay. Some, I don't know if, if it was like, if it was someone accidentally bought bot or followers or something. Yeah. Um, but like I think uh, I do definitely like use Instagram like to connect. Honestly, I think it's like connect with people around me. That's like the first point of connection of like oh yeah. you, you know you meet someone in person and, yeah um, and, and dating too. Actually, honestly, like Instagram for dating like that that's it's all their about first yeah, yeah that's, that's their first that's their stalk. first stalking yeah yeah, yeah. it's like 
Like if you don't what have a do? solid Instagram page, like you're in bad shape. Right. It's like it. you're like portfolio as a person. If like, all right, like <laughs> you're like, it, it, does he have like mostly pictures of his cat? You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like if if my my stories are all cat videos, and then my pictures are trying to like make me seem like an interesting person. Right. You know? Right. You got to have cool pictures and cool. That's, that was my takeaway when I saw it. Like I have like 30 followers on Instagram. They're like friends and family. I don't know how to do Instagram properly. Like I do it all wrong. <laughs> and then I saw your page. I was like, holy crap. Like you got like a legit Instagram page, you know? I mean, I, I think, I, I, oh no. At one point I was like, all right, can I like, you know, be an influencer or whatever of like, you know, uh, get, to go places for free um and then i kind of gave up on that okay. but yeah. i i used like one of my businesses like when i was 14 years old i like reviewed computer parts i like set up a website and i realized like that was like before facebook instagram i was like i was like an influencer and I got like free computer parts from like AMD and Intel. What? Just because I like set up a website, you know, like because that was a like a little advanced, like if you even knew how to set up a website. And so it's oh, like yeah. Microsoft front page, you know, like it looked legit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. You were an influencer <laughs> before there was influencers. Exactly, exactly. I got a lot of free stuff, actually. Nice. <laughs> and then I sold it. I didn't make any money on like advertising, but I like reviewed the computer parts to get free computer parts, and then I built computers and sold them with the computer parts. Yeah, man. Living the dream. That's the dream right there. At, at 14, it was the dream, honestly. Like, that Heck was yeah, like... dude. I was like, this is my life. If I can just like build computers all my life, like I'll be happy. Dude, like I'm totally trying to um, get my like my daughter. My oldest is 10 and, you know, I'm very kind of entrepreneurial. So I'm always thinking about what kinds of things she can do. And, you know, we homeschool our kids. Yeah, I so, was homeschooled, too. Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of the responsibilities on you as a parent to think about not only their education, but what's the end goal of education, which is ultimately their career, their work, how they're going to make money. Yeah. And so I'm always thinking of things and, you know, oh, we should do a lemonade stand. And, um, you know, whenever she's into something, I'm like, oh, you should sell that. Like she's into making dolls. I'm like, you should sell that. Let's get you an Etsy store. I think I helped her set up an Etsy store at some point. Oh, well. um, and then Reese, and then she recently, she'd been doing a ton of drawing, um, on the iPad and it's been getting a little bit better and better. And the other day yeah. I saw this drawing she did and I was like, this is really good. Um, and I was like, I need to see if I can get her like a freelance gig doing like some illustration. And so yeah. I tweeted about it. Um, and this guy replied to me, um, who used to live in Miami actually can't mm -hmm. remember his uh, full name, but he, um, and then he's been traveling recently, but anyway, he was like, yeah, like do a, an illustration of my dog. And he sent a picture Aww. and he's like, well, I'll pay you 10 bucks. So I had That's her do awesome. it and he loved it. And so she's had officially her first like, like paid gig, you know, Ooh, which is kind of cool. She's legit. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I but think, like, yeah, I but like awesome. if she could yeah. be doing something like that, like at 14 where she's making like money, you know, like I think mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely my goal. Like by the yeah. time she's, whether it's 14, 15, whatever, like much earlier than 18, I want her mm -hmm. to be developing some skills where she can make some money, you know? For sure. I, and I think like it's it's good to like kind of start young of like making money off of like things that you do and, and love because it, it does like change it a little bit. Like when you're making money, uh, it's like, oh, it's not just for the art or, yeah, 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 you yeah. know. Dude, I but immediately I, good... like immediately shifted the moment that the guy said he's gonna pay ten bucks. Like, uh, she did the first draft of the drawing, and mm -hmm. I was like, and normally she shows me her drawings and whatever it is, whether I like it or not, I'm like, oh, that's really cool, good job, you know. But she <laughs> shows me this first draft, and I was like, oh, do you want to do a second draft? Because <laughs> I didn't think it was feedback round. Yeah, 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 and I immediately went into like the client mode where you're kind of critical. And then I was mm -hmm. worrying about it. Cause like, Oh my God, I don't want to make her hate to draw. 
but right. I also yeah. want her to kind of explore this entrepreneurial side. Um, but it, but it definitely does impact whether it's art or whatever that, whether it's coding, like you can sometimes kill those passions, uh, because yeah. of the business side of things. Right. Yeah. It's definitely a balance. Yeah. Uh, and like, I think a lot of people can get too imbalanced on, on either spectrum, because I think like, if you don't go into, um, even, or especially something like art, uh, like a lot of artists, like they're so talented, but they don't know how to like market their skills. They're just, you know, like, you know, pure, pure artist. And, you know, it, it never becomes more than a side you know, hobby, be, even though they would love it because they're not used to like, like work, working with, with people, working with clients and, um, you know, working with clients can definitely sometimes like make you hate, your the work life. that you do <laughs> yeah yeah I do, I do it all day but i don't hate my life you know <laughs> not today <yeah. laughs> um but yeah but like you have to like balance that and yeah. i you know over time too i think as you get more skilled as like an artist or whatever you can also like pick your clients better and you can get better clients and um you also have more authority to be like this this is who i am but if you just like start out uh, from something of like, you know, even coding of just like, well, I just made this thing, you know, uh, people should love it. Um, they're not necessarily going to yeah. love it. Um, but if you go into it of, with a mindset of like, I'm making this for you, what do you think? You know, taking that feedback, that cycle, I think is really like important yeah. to, to developing a skill. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, man, this is a lot of fun, dude. I appreciate you taking yeah. some time. And uh, where awesome. uh, where can people find you online? Um, Other than mostly Tinder. <laughs> Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, uh, all those apps. Um, uh, mostly Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at, uh, at Mr. Lou, M-R-L-O-O. Um, that, that's my handle. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a good place. Twitter. Yeah. Don't stalk me on any of the other platforms. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nice. It's, it's probably linked in my profile anyway. Nice. <laughs> cool. Thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Awesome.